Hi friends, it is day three of the Every Bit Counts Challenge and today we are gonna be preserving cabbage by making sauerkraut. It is the month of August and every single day in the month of August, we're participating in the Three Rivers Homestead Every Bit Counts Challenge where we preserve something every day throughout the month of August and we are bringing you a video every day of something different and how to preserve it. And the idea behind this challenge is to take a teeny tiny little bit and to preserve it along the way so that it adds up to a big bit. It doesn't have to be huge batches at once. Teeny tiny bits over time really add up to stock your pantry. One of the requests that we got was sauerkraut. So we are going to be fermenting some sauerkraut. Now I had already planned on fermenting several things throughout this canning season because I took a fermenting workshop with Stacy from Doug and Stacy Off Grid that was, you know, later in the spring and it was fantastic and I learned so much and I want to be able to share with you that probably the easiest ferment of all that you can do is cabbage. The benefits of fermenting are massive. Stacy mentioned that in one tablespoon of sauerkraut, there's more probiotics than in an entire bottle of, you know, the probiotic pills. So it's pretty, it's pretty good for your health, good for your gut health. The more we learn about the gut biome and, and how it affects the immune system and your overall health, the more important it is for us to really pay attention to take care of that. And if a teeny tiny bit of probiotic food can do that, then hey, <laughs> I'm on board. But this is really a great place to start. If you're excited about fermenting, cabbage is so, 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 so easy. The sauerkraut is two ingredients. It's cabbage and salt. <laughs> and I use this Redmond's Real Salt. This is non-iodized, mineral-rich salt. It doesn't have the, the minerals stripped out of it. <laughs> which is really important and it gives a lot of nutrition. This is the brand, there's several brands of mineral salt. You can get the pink Himalayan salt or several different kinds that are really great. This one's actually mined in Utah in America. So it travels the least distance and it's mined right here. So I like this salt. I also have the Himalayan pink salt that I use from time to time. So just pick your favorite and you will need some canning jars. Typically speaking, a two pound cabbage will fit in one canning jar. These are like huge cabbages. These are like three and a half pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and cleaned extra jars just in case I needed them. And you do want to, when you're fermenting, it's not the same as canning because in the canning process, you're going to be sterilizing your jars. You need to rinse them out, but the, the canning process sterilizes those jars. However, in the fermenting process, your jars are not gonna be sterilized because we're just gonna fill this and stick it on a shelf. So you do wanna make sure your jars are clean and sterile. Everything you're using is clean and sterile. Your hands are nice and washed because we don't want any bacteria getting in this. Um, but that being said, the lactic acid that you're gonna create in this ferment is gonna kill any bacteria that's growing I'll show you how to keep the, the cabbage underneath the brine so that nothing molds and nothing happens to it. Uh, you don't have to be scared of ferments. This is an age old tradition and it's a great one. A few other tools that I love but are not necessary at all. Um, I have these canning weights from Mason Top. This, or these, these pickle weights, and these hold down the ferments so that they weigh down under the, the the liquid in there. You can use, actually, you can use a sterile clean rock or anything that's heavy if you want to push this down. These also, these are called pickle pipes, and these are wonderful for setting and forgetting your ferments because the what happens in your jar, if you seal the jar, the, the gas will build up and every day you have to come by and burp the jar and let some of the gas out. But if you have one of these pickle pipes, what happens is the, the gas builds up and it pushes and the pipe releases and there's a little hole on top that releases that air pressure. And these are wonderful. 
And then I love my Mason Tops Pickle Packer. It fits right into the jars and it's great for smashing the cabbage down in there. This is wonderful. And these actually, you can buy them all separately, but it's much more cost effective to buy the whole set. It comes with four weights and four of the pickle pipes and the pickle packer and a recipe book and stuff. And they're really nice, high quality. I love Mason Tops. So I will link that down below. That's what I use. But none of those things are 100% necessary. You can do any of this process without them. They just make your life a little bit easier. So. All right, let's get started. This process is incredibly easy. You're gonna be shocked. So the first thing you wanna do is we wanna peel several layers of the cabbage leaves off and save the outer leaf because we are gonna use that later on when we, go, when we pack these in our jars. So I'm saving the outer couple leaves from each of these cabbages. You can use red cabbage or green cabbage. I like to use them both and have a pretty little mixture. The red adds a really pretty color to your brine. But there it is, that's all. Now, I'm gonna cut this cabbage into little bitty strips and we'll put it in this bowl. How big you cut these are also personal preference. Um, I'm gonna cut little bitty strips that are about an inch and a half long, uh, but you can cut however tiny you like it. If you like teeny tiny, go for it. All right, we have our cabbage all shredded up in this bowl, and now we're gonna add salt, and really that's as easy as it is. You can add a tablespoon to two tablespoons per head of cabbage, depending on the size of your head and depending on how salty you like it. I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons per head, so four tablespoons total, because these were really big cabbage heads. and you just pour the salt on top. And the next step is pretty easy as well. You're just gonna mash and crush that cabbage until it releases some of the liquid because the liquid is going to be the brine that covers them. There's no added liquid to this. You can use your hands, just make sure they're washed and cleaned really, really well. If you wanna put gloves, if you feel more comfortable with that, that's fine. Um, you can use the masher. Again, make sure it's sterilized really well. Now, let's get to mashing. All right, you can see we've really smashed this down and pulverized it. Now we're gonna take our jars and we're gonna fill this up to about the shoulder of the jar right here. We don't wanna fill it too much because some of it might expand and you don't want it to leak out the side. If it leaks out, it's fine. You can just empty some of it as you go, which is why you do wanna keep an eye on your ferments every few days just to make sure nothing crazy like that's happening. It's not ruined, but it's a lot easier to deal with. <laughs> It'll make a stinky mess if it leaks out. Go ahead and all we do is just add this to the jar. I have these filled up to the shoulder and I'm gonna go ahead and mash down and you'll notice when you mash that that liquid comes up to the top and that's what you want. That liquid is gonna be what covers our cabbage. And then you probably have some liquid in the bottom of the bowl. We're gonna put this liquid, just pour it in over top. Now you're wondering why we saved these cabbage tops. This is gonna help with pushing down the material on top in one solid piece. So if you leave any of the solid material above the top of the brine, it's going to mold. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna put a cabbage leaf on top and the weight on top of the cabbage leaf. I'm gonna tear this to the size I need it. 
If you do have some particles floating to the top, every day come and push those down and make sure they stay wet and submerged and it won't mold, but you do have to check on it every day. So I'm gonna put that leaf on and then I'm gonna put this weight on and that's gonna keep it submerged below. And we'll take this for the second one. Tear it to where it covers. And we're gonna put the weight on. And this is what it looks like. And you can see in here that the weight is on top and then all the material is below that weight. And the chickens are absolutely gonna love my scraps. They love preserving season because, well, <laughs> they get lots of scraps. All right, the next step is we're going to take our pickle pipes or you can just use regular jar lids, it's totally fine. And we're gonna put those on top and seal them with a ring. And these, remember, allow it to breathe. And you wanna wipe down the outside of these jars really well. So we always wanna label these. Since I don't have a regular jar lid, I'm gonna go ahead and just use these labels. They're just plain old labels I picked up at Staples. And they're gonna stick right on here. And I wanna make sure, most importantly, I have the date. And there we are. Now, in the next few days, you're gonna notice a bunch of changes going on with your sauerkraut. It's gonna start losing the color. It's going to start getting bubbly. It's gonna start doing all sorts of fun things in here. This process is going to take three to four weeks. It takes a little longer if it's cooler. It is hot outside. So I'm gonna guess it won't take quite as long, maybe three weeks for us, which means at the end of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, I can open it and show you what it looks like before we pack it away. Even with the pickle pipes, you do wanna keep an eye on this every few days, open it up and see and make sure there's nothing that looks out of the ordinary, no mold growing on top, that kind of thing. And um, just keep an eye on it. Other than that, it needs to go in a cool, dark place. My pantry is the perfect place for this. So it's gonna sit in our pantry until it's ready to be eaten. What I wanna know is, have you fermented before? What are your favorite ferments? I've done a little bit of fermenting, but really this year is my biggest foray into fer fermenting because I took that class. So um, I wanna know all the recipes, all your tips and tricks. You just throw them at me. <laughs> I learn so much from the comment section of these videos and hopefully they're a forum where everybody can learn. That's day three. We're gonna keep plugging along every day in our Every Bit Counts Challenge. If you missed a day, I'm going to link the playlist of the Every Bit Counts Challenge down below so you can catch up or if you're catching this later, you can watch the whole thing. Um, it's a fantastic challenge. Search the hashtag Every Bit Counts and you'll find all the other channels that are participating. It's wonderful. We're so thankful to Three Rivers Homestead for the inspiration and the encouragement to do this every year. And be sure, if you got some value out of this, to hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're gonna be notified every day when we put new content out for this Every Bit Counts Challenge. Thank you so much for joining us.